Hare Krishna, a very warm welcome to all the devotees to our program on Srimad Bhagavatam study. In this particular part of Srimad Bhagavatam study class, we are uh, doing a shloka memorization workshop. This workshop is mainly geared towards uh, giving the opportunity to the class participants to be able to memorize, recite, explain the word meanings and then explain the translation of the words, mainly to give them a little more deeper taste of Srimad Bhagavatam. As we know that Srimad Bhagavatam is something which has to be drunk, like Pibatam Rasamalayam. <clears throat> so drunk means uh, uh, tasted by uh, small, small sips. So when we memorize the words, we go deeper into the word meanings. It is actually like relishing the taste of Srimad Bhagavatam. So in that spirit, we are doing this uh, workshop uh, and devotees are very kindly uh, also showing interest by memorizing and participating in the workshop. So I really appreciate their endeavor. So we will start with a small Mangala Sharan. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirayet Nashta Prayeshva Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatya Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Krishnaya Vasudevaya Devaki Nandanayacha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govinda Yanamo Namaha <coughs> Okay, here is the verse in front of you. Uh, so in, in, in the beginning of the class, we show the words, we show the word meanings and show the translation. But in general, when we ask the devotees to recite it, uh, we hide the hide the screen. Etadishanam ishasya prakritisthopi tadgunaihi na yujjate sadatmasthair yatha buddhis tadashraya na yujjate sadatmasthair yatha buddhis tadashraya So this is the recitation of the verse. And now I would like to invite Manish ji to kindly uh, recite this verse without looking at the screen or without taking any help. Maybe yes, Prabhu. Develop, develop the confidence uh, to recite the verse. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Eta dishana mishastya prakurti stopi santad gunaha na ujete samat na ujete. Samadmas Sadatmas Ter Yatha Buddhista the Ashraya. Very nice, very nice. Okay, once more, Prabhu, once more. Yeah. Dishana Mishasya Prakurti Stopi Sadad Gunaha Na Ujete Sadatmas Ter Yatha Buddhista the Ashraya. Very nice. There are a couple of maybe one or two small, small corrections. Etad Ishanam. Uh, you are pronouncing Etad Ishanam. Etad Ishanam Ishasya. Not Ishanam. Not Ishanam. It is Ishanam. Okay. Etid Ishanam Ishasya. Etid Ishanam Ishasya. Prakurti Stopitad Gunaha. Na Yudjate. Na Yudjate. Yudjate. Yeah. Na ujjate, na ujjate, na na ujjate, na ujjate, na ujjate, sada atma ster, yatha buddhi, tada ashraya, yatha buddhi, sada ashraya. Very nice. Take a yamper. If you see on the screen, etad ishanam, etad ishanam, like this, etad ishanam, and then na ujjate, ujjate, na ujjate, ujjate, why? Why or ya? Na yeah, yujjate yeah. sadatma sthair. Okay. Haji. Okay. Please continue, Prabhu. Now you got the uh, pronunciation correct. And then maybe you can explain a little bit about the different word meanings. It may not be very accurate. Maybe roughly you can try to explain. Yeah. Eta means this. Eta, dishanam. Dishanam is. Uh... Ishanam Ishasya is the personality of Godhead and Ishanam is the divinity. Hmm. Yeah. 
prakriti stopi tad gunaha prakriti stopi is that getting connected to the material nature tad gunaha tad gunaha is the three gunas yeah the three gunas of the material nature na ujjete na means never affected yeah na ujjete sada atma sada atma bhair that is the people who are uh, who are eternal or uh, who are uh, who are already uh, surrendered to the god hmm and the last one is uh, yatha uh, buddhi hmm. yeah buddhi is intelligence <coughs> tad ashraya tad ashraya is who, are, who have surrendered to the who has found shelter uh, to the lotus feet of the lord very nice very nice okay very good yeah, yeah. so so this verse is related to the divinity of the lord krishna the personality of god head hmm. so he creates everything and he has also created this uh, <clears throat> prakriti or the material nature but he is not under the influence of this material nature mm-hmm. also very good the devotees who 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 have surrendered to lord krishna are also not influenced by this material qualities or this material entang- entanglement very good very good prabhu that's a uh, very nicely explained very sweetly simply explained uh really appreciate so can you explain little bit more about what do you mean by they are af- not affected by the material nature so once once you have surrendered to the lord i think mm-hmm. this all you you come out of so you you become more pure or maybe more uh, connected to the sattva gun or something and then you you typically come out of all this material entanglement this this connection to the material nature uh, diminishes day by day once you surrender everything to the lord once you take shelter <clears throat> under the lotus feet of the lord hmm. yeah yeah that is okay but can you explain little in simple terms what does it mean by getting affected by material nature or beyond material nature beyond gunas uh, what does it mean by uh, na yujjate tad gunahi na yujjate tad gunahi na yujjate means they are not affected by the gunas so what are so, the what are the gunas what are the different gunas do you know yeah, yes 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 so sat guna rajo guna and tamas uh, tamo guna okay. tamo guna okay so Correct. person or a, or somebody who is affected by tamo guna what is the quality of that person what is the behavior characteristic of that person yeah so tamo guna person hmm. is always sleeping or eating sleeping mating so that is how is hmm. the typical hmm. quality for tamo guna he has nothing <clears throat> to do so he is hmm. absolutely non spiritual Hmm. and uh, rajogun is also uh, is better than tamogun but still he feels that he doesn't uh, uh, hmm. what you can say the rajoguni people is little bit uh, thinking more, more in the materialistic uh, terms yeah hmm. what so, does it mean by thinking materialistic terms so he he uh, he he will work hard to earn money only so he will hmm. see that i have a house i need more so more hmm. and more he will try to achieve yeah? and work hmm. like anything and yeah. he never selfishness selfishness correct right yeah okay yeah. and what about sadguna sadguna people are like they know the existence of the god or they they are better than tamo and rajogun but mm. still uh, uh sometimes they think that they are uh, everything is happening because of me only so that is one mm. of the bad quality they think i am the doer but it is not mm. like that it has to be understood that the lord is the doer actually but Correct. still the satoguns are in a better place than the rajo hmm. and the bogo yeah sat satogun people are better placed uh, yes. because at least they have uh, some sense of goodness but as you yeah. rightly mentioned and very nicely mentioned that they also they have this uh, uh, tendency of doers tendency of doership doers yes because they 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 are very well placed they have good qualities uh they think that they are the owner of those qualities the qualities yeah. they have acquired is mainly because of their goodness they forget that okay. actually everything comes from the lord even the good qualities they are getting it from the lord and have to be utilized in his service so yes. that is why they become a little proud hmm. so they kind of continue to uh, rotate in in the human form of life again and again taking birth in sadguna satoguna 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 and so on so very nice so each of these gunas have difficulty have some problem right. hmm. so hmm. the lord is also beyond these gunas and the lord's devotees are also beyond these gunas hmm. 
very nice very nicely explained and what is the context of this verse why in shrimad bhagavatam it is being spoken at this point of time in 11th chapter first canto why uh, this description is coming that the lord is beyond gunas and the devotees also beyond gunas why this what is the context here <clears throat> need to learn more prabhu but hmm, no problem it is mainly because in this uh, chapter lord's entrance in dwarka is described and okay. when lord enters into dwarka he goes to meet his family his wives hmm. he has 16108 wives and wives and, hmm. and uh, many more children <clears throat> so he go to meet his wife the wives and there are descriptions about how the wives are behaving when they see the lord how the lord is reacting when they see this family and so on all those he also meets his mother etc etc so sometime people may think that lord's dealing with his family member wife etc is very material is at the same platform as we have like for example mm -hmm. uh, satya bhama one of the queens of the lord Uh, demanded that i would want to get parijat tree from the heavens and lord as a very nice husband arranged for that parijat tree for satyabhama queen satyabhama so people might when they hear these kind of descriptions of the lord they might think that they he is also behaving like us our wife also asks for some jewelry some gifts etc and we arrange for it and we also engage with our wife in a similar like a normal materialistic man and women relationship in the world so here it is being cleared in the bhagavatam that lord's relationship with wives with with ladies with women uh, in this material world is not like the material relationship between a man and a woman it is yeah. transcendental it is beyond because lord is not affected by the modes that is the reason is given in 38th verse lord is beyond the modes all the lord create these modes lord is the originator the lord is the source of these modes lord also gets situated in these modes when he comes and takes avatar in the material world he is in contact with these modes appeal so seemingly in contact with these modes but he is beyond these modes and similarly his devotees are also beyond these modes yatha buddhi tadashraya tadashraya means who have taken shelter of the lord's shelter and who has taken shelter of the lord they are known as devotees devotees so tatha buddhis yatha buddhis tadashraya yatha means like. like like the lord is beyond the modes similarly the devotees of the lord are also beyond the modes that is the explanation okay now yes. very nice now we go to jayamala mata ji mata ji uh, request you also to kindly recite and explain us the meaning thank you hari krishna uh, shrimad bhagavatam 1.11.38 प्रकृतिस्तोपिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्तुनिस्त
and uh, everybody receives the lord with lot of happiness and uh, joy and mm -hmm. uh, sri krishna finally meets his queens and though they are very beautiful and very attractive and spotless uh, mm -hmm. beyond comparison but still uh, the lord uh, they it could not agitate the senses of the lord mm -hmm. so in previous verse to this verse um, <clears throat> so he says that the uh, materially conditioned uh, living entities like us uh, out of our ignorance we sometimes think that the lord is one of us and that mm. he is dead by matter but mm. in this verse it is made very clear that the lord is never affected by material nature or the uh, three gunas uh, mm. he, that the this is the divinity of the lord that mm. the lord is never entangled Uh, by the qualities of the material nature, though he is in contact with them, and uh, next he says that yatha buddhi stad ashraya. That is, even the pure devotees of the Lord mm. uh, who have, by their intelligence, taken the shelter of the Lord, uh, they do not get influenced by mm. the material qualities. And the Shrila Prabhupad in his book <laughs> gives mm. the example of the six Goswami Vrindavan. Mm. Yeah. They, they all of them were were born in very rich and aristocratic families, yet they could give up everything to follow mm. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. And outwardly, they uh, look to be in a very pathetic and wretched condition. But mm. actually, they were very um, uh, they were the uh, richest in uh, spiritual values. Mm. So which Mah. <clears throat> words of the pure devotees mm. they are always above the they are uh, above the uh, the neutralities of life and mm. they are never affected by uh, hunger or thirst or sleep or uh, insult or honor they are never affected by that so in essence this verse says that although shri krishna he orchestrates everything in the material mm. uh, world uh, mm. the like uh, creation and uh, maintenance and the destruction and mm. uh, has many demigods under him who take care of the material affairs so he is in contact uh, as you said uh, by uh, by his incarnations uh, he comes and uh, de uh, he uh, is descends on the mm. on the planet world. material world yes correct and still mm. uh, he uh, he is completely transcendental and uh, he is never affected by the uh, qualities of the material nature and similarly even his pure devotees they are also transcendental and mm. they are also uh, never affected by the three gunas thank you yes mother thank you mother ji so one question for you i think you covered it pretty well almost comprehensively from prabhupad's purport perspective but i think one point i would like to check from you you mentioned the example of six goswamis and you called them to be as pure devotees no doubt about it and you mentioned that uh, so you agree that these uh, six goswamis are in the category of uttama uttama adhikari definitely prabhu ji okay now what about what about kanishta adhikari so can we say this also that kanishta adhikari is also beyond the modes of material nature can we say that no no prabhu ji when we look at the definition of kanishta uh, adhikari mm. uh, a kanishta adhikari is uh, interested in uh, deity worship but he mm. is not <clears throat> able to differentiate between a devotee or a non devotee mm. and uh, uh, that is why he is uh, he is also called uh, prakrit uh, adhikari prakrit adhikari परपोर्ट He is saying that Bhagwan ke bhag sadev divya hote hain. See, I have the Hindi one, so I'm just talking in Hindi. Means he is saying that the Lord's devotees are always divine, always transcendental. 
भले ही कभी कभी उनके आचरण का पतन होता दिखता हो सो समाइम्स दे में ऑल्सो फॉल डाउन ना वी कांट एक्सपेक्ट सिक्स गो स्वामी टू फॉल डाउन isn't it so whom can we expect to fall down we can expect to fall down devotees something who are maybe at the madhyama level or maybe at the kanishta level but propad very clearly writing bhagwan ke bhakt sadaiv divya hote hain so the all the devotees of the lord are transcendental now in 9.30 bhagavad gita he is quoting here shila propad uh, in 9.30 lord declares that even if my devotee falls down then uh, Uh, still you should consider him as transcendental uh, because <clears throat> maybe they may have fall down now but because they are situated in devotional service uh, only will time they will be uh, only the time is separating that they will be uh, completely devoid of all these uh, problems so the point here mata ji we define the definition of pure devotee nor not because if somebody is falling down or not Prabhupada's way of defining pure devotees, or not even Prabhupada, actually Rupa Goswami also defined pure devotees as those whose intentions are pure. If you read Bhakti Samrat Sindhu, I hope you are also coming to our Bhakti Samrat Sindhu classes. Recently, we have discussed about three type of adhikaris and four type of sukriti nas. Do you remember, Madhuri? Yes, yes, Prabhu ji. Ha. So all the three type of adhikaris fall in the category of pure devotees because they qualify the definition of pure devotional service anya abhilashita shunyam gyan karma adi navratam anukulena krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttama so the point here is if their intention is if their end goal is that if their end goal is lord krishna without any other desire without uh, Uh, without any uh, uh, giving covering of their bhakti with sakam karma or nirvishesh brahman uh, and then they are favorably in, involved in that and there may be some occasional fall downs but because their intention is clear intention is pure they still fall in the category of pure devotees hmm. and uh, if i may quote my guru maharaj lecture recently we translated one of our gurudev's book called govardhan i mean we organized some several reading session also from that so prabhupad ji was once asked are your disciples pure devotees uh, so prabhupad said no but they are like green mangoes and they will ripen with time <clears throat> maybe maybe they are not pure yet but they are like green mangoes they will ripen with time idea is uh that one uh, the way rup goswami is defining the definition of pure devotees is from the point of view of their intention although a kanishth adhikari may fall down although the kanishth adhikari may uh, get deviated for a time being momentarily but because his intention is still fixed up on the goal of uh, serving lord krishna in a pure uh, annabilashita shunyam gyan karma adi anavartam way he will still fall in the category of pure devotee that is the idea and that you if you read the end part of the purport you will you will realize that is the point uh, that prabhupad is bringing into the picture <clears throat> yes prabhu ji thank you so much yes. okay so that is something which uh, uh, is an important point when we ask pure devotee sometimes we say that okay some very ex- exalted souls are only pure devotees certainly maybe because of their consciousness they are pure but even kanishth adhikari fall in the category of pure devotees okay with that we conclude this session uh, all glories to shrimad bhagavatam all glories to shila prabhupad uh, maybe we'll will not take any questions now we'll move to the next session so thank you very much we'll stop sharing and stop the recording